All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, this is the 222nd uh, Governance and Risk Meeting here at MakerDAO. My name is Peyton. I go by Pros11 Online, and I am one of the governance facilitators here. Uh, I'm joined by live by a bunch of awesome people that uh, are interested or already contributing to the Maker Protocol. Uh, there's also some of you that are catching through this on the recording. Uh, to you, those of you who say hello. Uh, before we get started, we are going to go over a few ground rules. Uh, this will just help us have a nice productive call uh, and uh, make it so we can engage with, with one another uh, in some of the best ways. So first things first is if uh, you do have a camera and you're comfortable turning it on, uh, go ahead and do so. It's always nice to see who's joining us for these calls. Um, we love the virtual filters and uh, all the other fun stuff too, if you're not comfortable showing your face, uh, but still want to engage in a bit more lively way. Uh, kind of standard respect rules, let's try not to talk over one another. Uh, you can use a few tools if you want to still engage in the conversation, uh, but not ruin the audio or the uh, live experience of having multiple people shouting at once. Uh, you can use the raise hand feature in Zoom. Uh, that kind of lets me know, hey, you'd like to go on talking uh, after the person who's currently talking finishes up their point, you can also always drop a question or comment in chat and we'll try to work it in when conversationally appropriate. Um, that's it in terms of rules. Uh, one helpful thing though is uh, when you do come on the mic, if you don't mind introducing yourself, uh, letting people know who you are and if you uh, are there representing anyone, uh, that's always nice. So uh, awesome. I think that more or less does it for the rules. Uh, the only th other thing worth mentioning is this is meant to be an open call. We really do appreciate your uh, thoughts, questions, comments, all that stuff. Uh, so get it rolling. Uh, let's. It's more fun when more people participate. So looking forward to seeing what people have to say today. As usual, we have a bit of an agenda. We'll be going over the votes and what's happening in the land of maker improvement proposals. Uh, then we'll get into an uh, initiative uh, discussion. We'll be hearing from the Viridian cluster. Uh, they currently have a um, funding proposal up for vote, um, but there's also a cluster announcement and a bunch of other fun stuff to talk about today. And then for our big discussion talk about topic, we're going to be hearing from Retro, who's going to be uh, talking about DAO level objectives, uh, DLOs, which is uh, a MIP from a, a MIP set that he recently posted RFC. Uh, that's kind of attempting to tackle this question of how do we uh, prioritize and, and fund things uh, during this transition period uh, to the in-game constitution. So hopefully that uh, sounds exciting for you. Uh, we'll have time to talk about uh, a lot of good stuff uh, today. Uh, as always, uh, just be uh, mindful that, uh, you know, there's our people, everyone's here live. Uh, so treat each other with a little bit of grace, uh, ask your questions, and uh, we'll get along fine. So wanted to give a quick rundown on what happened on the voting portal. Um, we did have a rather contentious uh, pair of polls there on what to do with the GUSD uh, PSM. Uh, so what ended up happening there was no change one on the debt ceiling poll, um, but the poll to change the tout to zero, uh, that's the fee out that we charge when uh, GUSD is leaving the PSM, uh, turning that to zero did pass. Uh, we'll also hear about 15 ratification polls with voting ending on those on Monday uh, from our MITS editor in the next segment. Uh, so if you haven't voted yet, uh, there's a lot of stuff to consider. Uh, if you recall, on the executive front, last week we did not have an executive. Uh, and next week you can look forward to uh, a handful of items, including uh, the Maker Open Market Committee um, proposal. We've got a CES MKR transfer, some housekeeping on the Ave D3M and the FlashMint module. And then of course that poll that was successful to uh, lower the fee out uh, on GUSD PSM. Cool, that should do it for the votes update. I'm gonna hand over the mic here to Pablo, one of our MIP editors, uh, to tell you what's going on in the land of maker improvement proposals. Yep, hello everyone. Thank you, Peyton. Pablo here with a new weekly MIPS update. So the 15 ratification polls that went up on Monday are closing next Monday, as Peyton just said. So let's take a quick peek at how they're looking in the final stretch. So MIP 92 to onboard PSM USDC to Yearn has moved from a no to a comfortable yes since uh, last week. 
we also have a number of uh, amendments and removals in the next slide. Uh, cool. So this is a proposal to remove the cumulative 250,000 die limit from the protocol uh, die transfer MIP retains yes as the limit option. The two changes to the recognized delegate participation metrics are both being approved. Uh, the sub proposal that introduces, introduces changes to MIP 63 is also being approved. And next we have the sub proposal to repeal MIP 14, which has shifted from yes to no since last week. The sub proposal to remove two MIPs related to the superseded domain framework also has yes as the leading option. And uh, the amendment to MIP 51 to remove the December calendar exception is still being rejected. Um, as for coordinated framework related uh, sub proposals, the MKR retracted a compensation multiplier for the self affording sub proposal from CAPCOMS has shifted from 80% to 100%. Uh, we also have a number of uh, funding requests. We have three special purpose funds um, one to support the expanded. Uh, strategic finance mandate, one to develop a proof of performance for the Ferdinand cluster, and one for a defense fund, none of which were passing last week. Now it's only MIP 55C3 SP13 that isn't. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and we have two MIP 14C2 sub-proposals, that is uh, protocol light transfers to fund Indian Fair security and tech ops both of which are passing. And uh, finally, the sub-proposals to onboard Chainlink as a keeper network and to declare the intent to develop an on-chain monitoring solution for real-world asset pools are both passing. That's for the uh, stuff that's being currently voted on. Um, we have a lot of sub-proposals in RFC, most of which are eligible to enter the upcoming February governance cycle. Uh, as summarized on the previous GNR call, we have proposals to onboard real world asset holds, to introduce a defender contract against governance attacks, to start utilizing the HADS protocol, um, the introduction of new frameworks uh, to broadcast, prioritize, and manage requests for projects and associated funding, and very recently, MIP 99 to offer DAI to CFI to enable real world use cases. And just a heads up that MIP 94, which aims to implement a feature to refund people who's lost their die by sending it to the contract address, is going to be marked as withdrawn and replaced with a declaration of intent that will inherit its accumulated feedback period as the content will remain the same. Um, then we have on the next slide amendments and removals. We have an amendment proposal that modifies MIP 41, that is the facilitator framework. Uh, MIP to expedite some of its processes and increase its flexibility. An amendment to MIP 62, which is the collateral affording process MIP that allows changing the communication responsibilities. Um, we have a number of uh, coordinate related uh, proposals. We have a coordinate affording uh, for collateral engineering services, a budget request by TechOps, and a facilitator onboarding proposal for MICO to lead collateral engineering services. And finally, we have proposals to restart the uh, MKR burning and a MIP 14 request to fund the development of an informational end game portal. Uh, only one important date uh, coming up. If you're planning to submit a new proposal, you should do it. No, sorry, that's old stuff. Um, the last day to introduce <laughs> modifications to eligible proposals in RFC is January the 13th. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much. So we appreciate Pablo. I know there's a lot of stuff to get through. Uh, that went over your head or you missed what, where your favorite proposal was. Uh, keep in mind every Monday, our MIP editors do publish a written version of a MIPS update. So you can link out to the actual proposals and take a look at uh, what's coming down uh, the pipeline there. So thanks, Pablo, for that update. That's uh, going to bring us into our initiative updates. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are going to be hearing from the Viridian cluster today, uh, who were kind enough to provide some slides in advance. So happy to uh, click through those for you. And I believe it's going to be Rajiv who's uh, presenting. Is that correct? Correct. 
Awesome. Well, I'll meet myself and uh, take it away, Rajiv. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, Rajiv from, I guess I introduced myself now as Growth CU and Viridian Cluster. So trying to wear the two hats. Um, I'm, I'm here today not, not to pitch at all, or as you know, uh, as was mentioned, we do have an SPF up for vote. I, I know that the delegates have all the information they need there, but rather to just, I, I guess, quite transparently um, share the journey of a group who's trying to implement um, perhaps what's the first step of endgame, I guess, as we all have endgame over the horizon and, you know, wonder what that means. I, I think we're sort of perhaps having a real experience of, of actually trying to move forward with, with that implementation. So, so, so the idea is to talk a little bit about our journey. Um, how did we get here? You know, I've sort of had the opportunity just in prepping for this to actually take a step back and actually question, well, what are we doing? Um, be clear about the motivations and, and, and actually at the end, just share some of the challenges that, that we're encountering. Um, and I don't think we ever thought this would be easy, but it's 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 a learning and, and it comes with pros and cons. Um, if, if we could go to the first slide, please. So let me start with just some, I guess, background and context, because I think through last year, we were all introduced to this um, concept of clustering. And, and I must admit, when, when it first came out, I completely ignored it, um, I believe. That was in May. And through, I know it went through several iterations of design, um, refinement, and, and progress. And, and sort of as we went through the year, certainly as we were going into August, you started to see that this was gaining momentum and becoming um, very real and, and actually quite well defined at, at quite a granular level. And, and, and actually, quite a complex level. It's a small part of the entire, I guess, end game strategy. But the, you know, the end game approval MIPSET in August actually did introduce the concept of the recognized launch metadata clusters. Um, seven, I believe at that stage, I, th I think it, we're still at the same. And of the seven, there would be two protector metadata clusters. Um, and it started to look quite, quite real in, October, we um, introduced the Viridian cluster, and that came from Alan of Monetalis. And, and I'll talk a little bit about the arranger role in the cluster. But um, and in the same month, we we saw the endgame pre-launch MIPSET being being ratified. Um, there was a qu quick workshop that CES put together so that we actually started to or those who, who are interested in the clustering concept and, and contributing actually further detailed out what we were seeing, I, I guess, to align on our understanding. And, and coming out of that, the Viridian cluster put forward an SPF. And, and I think we are the first. Um, I think that's a little bit by design out of necessity, but you know the, the motivations were, were actually really simple um, for the cluster who have been quite, you know, it's a protector, um, MetaDAO, so, so the focus really is on RWA. Um, for the cluster members, they're all just very passionate about the RWA story. I'm extremely proud of where we are today in, in terms of, you know, yes, there have been issues, but we are the market leader when it comes to RWA. Anyone who's speaking externally in the market will tell you all eyes are on us. Every time we do something, it's, it's big news. And, and, and the motivation is really well, how do we, we just want to keep the momentum going. Um, so there is this huge organizational redesign. Um, it looks like we're through the design stage. We spent most of 22 going through that. We're sort of coming into 23, you know, let's go for it. Um, it looks like the design, the, the design is there. So we want to carry on with the growth and we want to prove out this, this, this cluster concept. Um, the understanding is still at this stage very, I guess, you know, for everyone, still it's still very theoretical. So, so the best way to learn is like, let's do it, let's play it out. So, so the objectives of 
you know, the next steps were very simple. Implement an endgame protector cluster structure as detailed out in the endgame approval MIP set and sort of further planned out in, in the planning workshop. And yeah, let's see if it works as, as expected. And also with, with a very clear eye on, well, we want to maintain the RWA growth, but, um, you know, sort of due to various events last year, we, we, we ended up losing a lot of talent. So, so part of the objective here was also to attract and onboard new, especially legal and credit talent, so we can carry on with the growth story, test out the new organizational structure. And we submitted that in, de in December. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So what exactly are we talking about in terms of the cluster? And, and, and if you bear with me, I, I sort of need to just level set the context here a little in, in terms of how we work today and, and introduce the role of an arranger. It, I guess it's something that's quite, I think, unique to, to make a DAO. But I'll use an example to illustrate it, and it's MIP65 that, that many of you are familiar with. But clearly, on the maker side, as you all know, we're, we're structured through these, um, I guess I call them sort of horizontal functional core units that have very clear, clear mandates. And, and we tend to think of we interact directly with borrowers. But, but in the case of what's happened with an arranger, I sort of like to think of it as almost it, it's, it's someone who's helped us build a bridge that allows us to invest into the TradFi world. And, and actually that bridge is bi-directional. The investments can go in and, and also come back. And the way they have done this is not by taking any money or borrowing money from us, is they've created a structure, a legal structure that allows us to do this. And, and um, I'm not gonna go into the details of it all, but it, it's hugely, legally resource intensive and operationally intensive um, that there's sort of various constructs in it we maker as an entity doesn't exist in the real world so a representative has to represent us in, in the form of a trust that trust can then go and open accounts and be kyc'd with the various entities that you need to enable this this investing so you know the concept of an exchange agent um, a custodian and finally an asset manager. And, and, and that's what's been done with MIP65. Um, Alan's on the call and can certainly take any detailed questions if there are. And I also believe he's going to um, publish an FAQ because it's, it's just good that everybody has the visibility and understanding of how things have worked today and you know what, the, what, what an arranger is. So an arranger has actually just built a trust structure to the benefit of maker token holders that can be left. And, and this, this structure, once it's in place, the beauty of it is it can be leveraged to carry on building the RWA portfolio. It can be leveraged by either building on the entities or reusing the entities that have been established or the accounts you know, that you have where you've KYC'd for other RWA projects, or you simply leverage the expertise because once you've gone through this a few times, um, yeah, everything gets quicker and, and sort of from, from the RWA projects that I've had the absolute pleasure of participating in as a growth um, contributor, what, what really has astounded me, and, and I think actually what a lot of people just don't appreciate is just how complex and slow moving they are, because in this off-chain world, when you're a DAO, there are a million and one questions. And, and, you know, and there's a reason why these take so long. There's a reason why they're so complex. And so the arranger takes away and abstracts a lot of that complexity for us. And, and actually it's, it's, it, it's been really interesting to see how that's evolved and, and how it starts to give us a little more um, momentum. So, the purpose of this was just to explain a little the role of the arranger and, and really clarify that that should not be confused for a, for a borrower. Um, if we could go to the to the next slide, please. 
So that's how we're working today. And actually, it's sort of, you know, there's some really nice momentum. If anyone looks at the reports strategic finance are producing, um, it's, it's, you know, Seb and Sam, it, it's just great to see now together, together with this and sort of part one of what we were looking to achieve as a cluster oh, is where do we want to go? And that's the end game piece that comes in. And with the end game piece, we have various new constructs being in introduced and I you know I'm not here to sell end game at all what, what I've had what I have done is thinking from the perspective of Viridian cluster which are the pieces that we need to integrate with and if we go forward with the cluster what's that going to look like what is the end goal of where we want to go to and I think many people have, have sort of seen this I know the SES team is going to do a, a whole load of work in further expand you know further expanding um the roles here but clearly the ecosystem actors, there's the concept of scopes and, and there, there are multiple scopes, I believe, I don't know, 12 or 15. Um, the one that's important to RWA is the RWA collateral scope. There's then the construct of the protector sub -DAO that will be governed by its own protector sub -DAO governance. And, you know, they work through an arranger that, that's sort of almost akin to a deal team that's out there bringing deal opportunities into, into the doubt. Um, I don't pretend to even, um, and, and look, there's, there's, there's much more to it. I, I, I guess the reason I've put this up, and it's not to really explain the structure, but it's, it's to highlight the fact that to make this transition, it's not just organizational, it's, you know, it's a complete redefinition of existing processes and that's actually without even getting to any of the tokenomics, which, which honestly, um, yeah, way beyond my capacity of understanding at, at the moment. So how do you make that transition and how do you get there whilst carrying on the momentum that we do want, want to carry on with? And, and I sort of see, you know, the way I'm interpreting the cluster is that's the first step that we need to take in this huge transition. So I imagine this transition is going to need a lot of different implementation phases because I, I, I just don't see how it happens big bang. And step one, as defined by the plan that we've sort of inherited, is this concept of a cluster. That is the starting point. And by no means do we have all the answers of how the clusters work. Um, you know, with sort of a few resources trying to figure this out. But the cluster in the case of the protectors, is con does compose is composed of this arranger working with. Um, I'm going to call them at this moment cluster contributors. And holistically, the idea of the cluster it really is for a small group of people who are passionate about a particular area to partner and arrange themselves. In this case, you know, I sort of see the mission as to arrange themselves to protect the DAO and invest effectively and productively. And for us, we sort of looked at, well, what's the first missing component of that? I mean, obviously, there's a lot to work out process wise, but, but actually, I mean, desperately, we need to onboard new legal and credit talent. And, and almost the first, you know, we're, we're, we're three, or at least from my perspective, I'm sort of three months in to this journey where I've actually started to um, take it, I guess, spend time on it and actually start to think through what what does it all all mean and you know the the first objective is really is like let's get in let's get in some talent who can help us who are qualified who've sort of done this at bigger levels who can help us keep the momentum going but also just add value to this new world where you know roles are going to change um processes are going to change and make sure we're doing it in a I guess, in the best way possible. Because over time, this gets even bigger. I've shown a very, I guess, small subsection, but you know, the, in the interest and the ethos of decentralization, this model scales so that you have new arrangers um, and sort of N number of, of protector sub, sub DAOs. I, I have no idea how long this is all going to take. Um, I have no idea how we actually get there. What I can tell you is we sort of took the 
the challenge to say, we're willing to take a first step, um, learn the first lessons, make the first mistakes, because I'm sure they're gonna be loads of mistakes. And in order to do that, you know, we're gonna follow the design as we understand it and put together a cluster. So, so that's, that's what we did. Um, it's been done together with a hundred other things. So obviously, you know, I've not thought through everything. I, I'm certainly um, not, you know, we, we're just not there yet. There, there, there's gonna be so much work, but to do the work, we sort of need, need the support. So if we could go to the, to the next stage, um, next page, please. Sounds easy, but you know, just to kick this off, I, I think there's some sort of points of, um, I'm gonna call them pushback, perhaps, that, that, that we're seeing. And, and, and I, by no means do I judge them. I actually think they're all, they're all you know, I, I understand where everything is, is you know, they're two, two sort of viewpoints. Um, I, I guess I was here just to sort of, to share the, the experience of actually trying to take what is a very theoretical, I guess, structure with some very theoretical constructs, such as the, the cluster, and try to take that to make it something real. And the, the pushback, and perhaps I'll start with the, with the easiest one, which is the last one, is it's too early. You know, we're not ready to move with the end game structure just yet. Um, and actually, I, I got an update and I've quoted some, some things that I've sort of seen from, from Rune. So in a Jan endgame update call, Rune did say that um, the new idea is actually to delay everything by, by six months and look to implement this in the summer of 2024 rather than late 2023. And I think that's really prudent because, I mean, obviously, everyone's understanding the complexity and sort of the, you know, this is not something you do in a short amount of time frame, And it's, it's you know, so, so we wait to see um, what sort of the new plan looks like, but it looks like it's gonna be split into two parts. One's a short-term pre-game constitution, which should, I, I understand is coming quickly. And the other is, um, you know, sort of the, fin the final end game. Another area of pushback, has been in terms of, well, what's the overlap and the competition with strategic finance core unit who do have the mandate to onboard RWA projects? And, and again, there's, there's an element of design here that I think doesn't help us. And it's, you know, we from the cluster have not designed this. We are simply trying to implement a design that's, I, I think, sort of out there. But, but I'll read it out because it's, it's a quote from the Endgame Approval MIP set that says, where it announces that two recognized launch clusters um, will, will form part of this initial step, a recognized protector cluster will be attached to the strategic finance core unit. This means the strategic finance core unit can use its governance powers to onboard RWA collateral. Um, that will be ado adopted by the protector cluster. So, so that's one cluster. One cluster gets attached to strategic finance. And, and, and I think that's a very synergetic, easy to understand phased implementation. Additionally, strategic finance will use its governance powers to onboard RWA collateral on behalf of the other recognized MetaDAO launch cluster. So. That's us, we're the other cluster um, that we fully collaborate with strategic finance, but we're not attached to it. And I think actually part of that's creating a lot of confusion. Again, this is by design. I am gonna take this all back to the design team because to me, it's very clear that's, that's creating a lot of confusion and to the, to the I think, you know, the, the misconception that in some way this is complex overlapping and competing if you look at where we're trying or where where the plan tries to get us to it's their various different protector sub DAOs I guess they're each getting there through a different journey and the fact that they're getting there through a different journey and from a different starting point um I think is an operational challenge and it's, it's an operational challenge that 
to be fair, I think we're already feeling by the fact that um, it's hard just to take take the first the first step. But um, I mean, the way I see it is with the cluster, we, we start to lay, lay a, a framework for the future onboarding model. But let's see um, how we how we get there. And 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 and, and the last piece is the the cost impact. And, and I think it's been less the cost impact and more the fact that we have an external component that's part of our cluster, which is the external arranger that, that's monetarless. Um, again, this, this comes from the design. Um, so I, I cannot speak to the, the whys, but as per the end-game cluster design, both protector clusters have been sort of the initial announcements have come from external arrangers. There's been Monetalis and Drop Tower um, centri together with Centrifuge. And, and, and the, way I, the way I'm interpreting this is, well, I, I, you know, I, I know there's a lot of discussion, which I think should happen at the appropriate levels to, to really see, is this design correct? But from the people who are actually trying to take it forward and now go to implementation, I, I guess the learning has been as we try to implement we're discovering at a more granular level, perhaps design questions that, that need to be addressed. Um, the end commentary I'll say is we, we, we've really come out at this with the best intentions of just moving forward, um, respecting the design as we understand it, and actually just trying to, to get things done. So I would just, you know, there is going to be a vote, I'm sure the correct decision will take place. But, you know, from a cluster perspective, we've gone out, we've tried, we, we, we have identified great talent to bring in and help contribute the, to this journey. So we're sort of ready to move forward and get to work. And, and we'll do that whenever the, the community decides that the timing is right. So again, it, it's, you know, this is really just a transparent open session to share a little and to, I guess hopefully there's some lessons learned for, for clusters that might follow us in terms of the experience that, that we've had. And I, I hope that's that's useful. We definitely uh, appreciate you coming on to talk a little bit about it, Rajiv. Um, obviously, our discussion topic is going to be kind of on this question of budgets and and how do we uh, handle this, this notion of uh, transitional work. Um, but before we move into that, I did want to give a chance for people to ask questions, uh, particularly about the Verdigan cluster, uh, some of the journey they've went on, or their SPF in particular. Um, like I said, if you have observations about general budget design and, and uh, other things for in-game, perhaps those will be a little better for our discussion segment. Um, but would really love us to take advantage of, of having Rajiv here and, and a few other cluster members from Viridian if uh, there are any questions. Um, I kind of heard someone in the background, but very quietly. Sorry if that was you and your mic set up. Um, I guess, uh, Rajiva, while we do have you here, uh, maybe you did want to kind of uh, address this question of like, how exactly an arranger fits in of not being a borrower. Um, the chat is kind of talking about maybe like servicer is like a, a better name for him, but uh, kind of curious if you could explain how you see um, your team's current role, right, with the DAO and, and how that's going to transition over the course of, of end game launching. Um, how this transitions, I think is going to be a learning journey. I it. it uh... I'm just being very honest with like there's a lot to figure out here. Um, I don't have the answers. P part of, I guess, you know, why we're looking to take these first steps is so that someone can start actually figuring this out with an informed view. So it's not something that's just theoretical, it's actually based on trying to implement 
and and learn from that. Well, for the arranger, um, I don't know. I, I'd actually invite the expert to actually talk about that role if Alan is willing, because um, you know that's the arranger in question that that we're working with. Yeah, sure. I I can I can speak a little bit to that. Uh, so the way to think about a ranger is 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 not as a as a borrower or as an asset manager because then we are misaligned with 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 maker generally. So because obviously then I start <laughs> and we start advising maker to make an investment in something that we already uh, you know would be we doing discretionary investment management in. So, so that's not it. What we are trying to be are the hands uh, of, of maker DAO in the real world to represent them as much as possible. To, to a large degree, you can probably see a ranger as more like a investment advisor or an advisor in, in, in some sense. Uh, the scope of work is as, uh, you know, the way I understand it anyway, is that the protector meta DAOs are being set up is to have a small team that's good at working together, but have a good split between them where we have certain people who are compensated and working with MakerDAO, which is you know, the team that we're trying to, to set up here. Um, and then of course, an outside party uh, to be the hands. So the hands that can in the, in the legal world, in the real world, set up these structures that are necessary, propose various investment opportunities, but fundamentally, make sure that they're already on the all, always on the right side of of Maker DAO, representing Maker DAO and the interests of the Protector DAO to to um, for, you know to get the best conditions basically, so they're in line. So we should have the Protector Maker DAO team and the arranger to be as aligned as, as as possible. But there is a split between the two, as in one part is is you know strictly strictly speaking. Meta DAO, or, no sub DAO uh, uh, employees, and the other ones are are external. So, as I understand the role now, remember there is really no there's no equivalent in the in the usual financial space, I guess. But it 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 is very much the way we've adopted the role, and I'm not saying anybody else couldn't adopt it differently. Has been to a we try to find the best structures. B, we try to negotiate the hardest deal with banks and investment managers and, and whatever. Um, we try to monitor and help the group to, to do that to the best of our abilities. And yeah, generally try to be a genuine long-term advisor and real world hands for it. And, and just to add to that, I guess that the, the idea with these cluster, again, <laughs> I, it, it, this is somewhat open for interpretation, but to me, it, it, it's very much that you need to try and get this team to start working together. You know, the small protector, the sub DAO team. Oh, sorry. The, the small team that we have here and the arranger team, because if, if, if they can start working together and it works over about a, a year or half a year, you start having a very effective machine that when the end game can truly start, it, you know, it has a, it has a really great productive starting point for it. So, yeah, I think those were would be my thoughts on that. Appreciate it, Alan. Yeah, if I can jump, uh, just uh, jump uh, a bit, uh, not to defend by cluster because I'm not in this proposal, but I'm still in the cluster. I mean, I'm strategic finance as well, and I'm kind of uh, trying to monitor the real world asset as well. Just from a very pragmatic perspective, I mean, uh, MakerDAO is doing a lot of real world asset. And currently, there are two people, soon three, to manage them. And it's not enough. And I would advise really to not, the community not to end up in the same situation as uh, last July, where uh, the community fired all the real world asset people and there was no one left to deal with it. So there wasn't an, any problem that I know of yet. But it's always better to have redundancy and more people to, yeah, more kind of core units. I don't know if it's Arranger, uh, uh, Cluster, or core unit, 
I wouldn't put too much attention in the world yet. It's just you need the resources and people to do the work and ensure that things are working properly. That I think the most important part than the taxonomy of all those people. I think I'd push back a little just because, um, I mean, the, the the arranger, you know, they're they're a business partner, but their incentives are are not like perfectly aligned with with makers. And because both the protector clusters, uh, the clusters that want to perform protector uh, sub DAOs, both of them have chosen to like form around an arranger. It kind of puts us in the position where the you know the the clusters basically are are the arrangers. So you know we we can't. It, it's not prudent to have the arrangers doing things like legal and credit analysis because their incentive is to originate as many deals as possible, right? So that they can service them or borrow against them, whatever the arrangement is. So, you know, I, I agree with you that, that we need people to do the work, but it just, it can't be done by, I mean, the arrangers should be doing it too for themselves, but, you know, maker still has to have someone else do the work from maker's perspective. And the credit and legal person is not hired by monetarists. That I can ensure you. But you are right. I mean, I, I would not agree with who. Anything. Who are they hired by? Uh, by the SPF, more or less directly. I think that's Rajiv. So, who who, who wrote the SPF? Uh, it was Rajiv. Mm, who wrote the original draft? Well, we. we I honestly we, don't know. I, the, I, I'm not saying so that we, it's perfect paper. I'm just saying that. What I suggest to the community is to find people to work with. And if you want to don't have monetaries or whatnot for plenty of reasons, I know that, and I understand that you don't have the full view that those people seem very legit. And I mean, even I saw monetaries do some kind of work that I'm quite sure wasn't in the interest of monetaries. But I can understand your perspective as well. But just the situation is not perfect, but what is perfect in this world? Yeah, I mean, it's just that if we fund the cluster, we're basically funding the arranger. The arranger is supposed to be a business partner, not getting funding from maker necessarily. So, you know, just, it, and maybe that's appropriate in some circumstances, but, you know, the, the, the problem is that the credit and legal analysis, if done like through this SPF, it's basically paying for it to be done from the perspective of someone whose incentive is to get deals done, which is fine. That's their prerogative, but it doesn't, it doesn't fill the need that maker has to get the credit and legal analysis done. So I, can I ask, I, so I'm not sure about, so we don't receive any of this money, just to be clear, that Manitale has received none of this money that is supposed to sponsor people who should be some of the new legal and credit talent inside MakerDAO, compensated by MakerDAO, to make sure that they are entirely aligned with MakerDAO, it had it, it it I I don't see I don't see any any we, we really don't see any benefit from this. Well, Viridian cluster is monetalist though. <laughs> it, it, it is not. I mean, so, so who, okay, hold on. Let's just let's just just from my perspective, who introduced the the cluster to everybody? Monetalis. Who wrote this SPF? You did. Who? found and, and I mean and then the the MIP 81 legal review like someone comes out of you know that unknown to to everyone else like comes in it looks again like it probably came from you so you know it just that's fine but it it means that Viridian cluster has become synonymous with monetalis which again is fine but it means it's just not the place to go for for maker to get legal and credit analysis that's going to look out for maker's interests first. Um, the, so I, I presented the the cluster because I think that's what was supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, the SPS uh, is is of course for the people who are supposed to sit in in the protector metadata, and I believe. Uh, all the legal opinions and so on. I'm pretty confident that that uh, the the lawyer that we that has been potentially uh, acquired by this SPF would also do this yeah. in Sorry. in respect of of 
of so, uh, maker. So, so I, I I feel this is uh, you know it it feels like <laughs> there's some idea of uh, of a nefarious uh, yeah. intentions here, which so, really there are. I don't think it's nefarious, but like you know, you wrote the SPF, right? You wrote the first draft, and then you gave it to Rajiv to polish it up. Guys, can I can I make a suggestion? Because um, because clearly there are always different viewpoints, and you know every everyone has them, and and paper, you, you know I I really have captured yours. It, it it's like it's it's why I've included it here, something to take back in. Um, you know it's you have an opinion, and I think it needs to be discussed, analyzed, and the decision taken. Um, I yeah I I sort of feel like I don't know if if this is the place to. A argue to allow or, or to actually get to a consensus on that external component, but you know I, I've captured that as something that clearly needs to be further understood and discussed based on your feedback. Yeah, and, and yeah, and yeah, you and I we we discussed a little of this earlier, um, and you know, and you know we can have a broader discussion about the cluster if you want i really just wanted to try to keep it narrow to this spf because i think that's what we were supposed to talk about today and you know the point is just maker needs someone that is not incentivized necessarily that, that doesn't stand to lose money if an analysis comes back and says this is you know this is garbage we shouldn't do it or oh or we should delay it we just need someone who's not in a position where they're going to lose money if if that's the analysis that comes back cuz you know, it's just human nature to kind of put a thumb on the scales, even if it's not intentional. We appreciate the discussion and getting a lot of voices uh, on here. I did see a comment in the chat that's a bit of a departure, but perhaps one that's timely and, and maybe interesting to other people on this call. Um, so if you'll give me a little leeway, I might uh, ask this question from Kiango, one of our recognized delegates, um, who's asking if we can hear from Cam, who appears to be on the call. Uh, introduction and some updates on the work being done so far, as well as the status of MIP81 and the legal review that was recently pulled from the forum. Hey, um, guys, uh, sorry, and, unless um, Cam is willing, I, I, I just sort of feel before you've even been, I guess whilst we're even discussing a design phase implementation that might bring her on board, I, I I'm just cautious about having someone new to the community coming on to a recorded forum in, in this way. I, I think they're more appropriate forums. And, and, and Kenga, we, I, I think we can certainly arrange that um, forum either with yourself or, or with delegates as, as required. So, so let me touch base with you and, and we can set that up and, and answer any questions. If you want to Hi. respond, go, go for it. Yeah, Kenga. sure. Um... Speaking on behalf of Acre Invest recognized delegate, we are notorious for not doing private meetings and insisting that really these kinds of conversations happen in a public forum because God, the whole integrity of the model that we're trying to advance here for the world depends on it, you know, how we are going to be different from the traditional financial system. So uh, I mean, I'm fine if everyone wants to defer. I mean, no one's forced to come on a recorded call or anything like that. I would just say that I think something that was put for a vote or was you know almost put for a vote based on a legal opinion or a legal review that was posted, I think it's fair, however many days later it is today, and the, if the person's on the call, they've done, uh, I mean, I ask these questions on the forum, you know, what's the, who's the client, obviously, just for those who don't know, I'm an, an, att an attorney licensed in the state of New York in the US, so um, 
that's the framework in which I'm curious and understand, you know, ethical issues around legal representation and who the client is and conflicts of interest and sort of who's paying the bill here if the SPF hasn't been approved. So I think those are all, you know, really fair questions um, to have aired in this call. And certainly someone who's doing such crucial, I mean, goodness, the, 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 the difficulties we're all in in this space right now have really, I think, painfully highlighted why some issues that, you know, I've been often probably seen as a wet blanket <laughs> and a broken record. I mean, you know, we are all having like painful real time examples of why some of these questions are, are really important to have understood and have the votes that take place being done in, a, in an informed way. And just that there's that, you know, comfort that people in the community have 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 all the clarity and, and just, you know, can follow the ball. So I think it's fair if, if this person is on the call and has been retained that we ask who retained this person. And since the SPF hasn't been, um, you know, vote is, is currently being voted on, and that, you know, we get to meet the person who's doing legal work on behalf of the DAO. Okay, okay I'll, I'll add maybe, or present another side to that. I, I think to have someone who has been onboarded, yes, completely agree, but to have someone who may or may not be approved and is, I guess, also in the phase of evaluating the DAO and what it means. I'm sorry, I just don't think this is the forum. To, to, to your questions, um, I'm happy to actually reach out and um, tell you. Um, to be fair, I am you know, did this in a manner based on, after speaking to Christian Peterson, our last and only other sort of legal reference and, and I can talk you through that and perhaps it's the right way perhaps it's the wrong way I you know if you have the expertise we're, we're all on a learning journey to just make this the whole process more more professional I, I I'm, I'm just very conscious of you know that there's some things about the DAO if you're trying to attract new talent we, that, there's just forums and ways of respecting those people sorry that yeah but I'm, I'm happy to reach out to you and discuss and our end obviously happy to facilitate a call if we feel there's more appropriate to to do a single issue or, or something a little more focused as well um we are generating a lot of good discussion here um so i think i am gonna make the audible and say we're gonna uh, postpone dlos for uh, a future call uh, one interesting thing I'd like to pull out of the chat here and, and maybe get us to discuss on, um, and maybe you have some thoughts on it, Rajiv, is uh, this idea of, of still being a CU and, and trying to start coordinate with um, uh, with with a cluster, right? With with a group that's maybe not been formally recognized by maker governance yet. Um, so we're curious, like, how do you balance your your role with growth and getting, um, you know? duties and 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 paid there versus uh trying to to do something that's solely for the cluster which is obviously separate from the the CU role yeah you you don't is the the simple answer um trust me this is this is not fun um and and actually I I would like to acknowledge and thank Nadia who's been extremely supportive and and understanding from a growth CU perspective to allow me the bandwidth to dedicate time time to try to take this, well, I guess as a first step, um, trial step with end game forward. Yeah, I hope that answers it without going into too much detail. I, I, I'm, I'm always conscious, um, you know, if you, if you try to do too much, um, you know, you, you you need focus to 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 succeed at things, and I, I guess the outcome of this particular funding request will will determine for me where where that focus lies. I appreciate you sharing, and kind of the struggle with that situation, right? Like, I think this is 
something the entire organization is is finding itself in with just this crossroads with this idea that hey we are heading towards a new organizational structure but um it hasn't been fully uh, taken care of yet so uh there's there's going to be some real growing pains uh, that that naturally kind of have to come to a governance vote so I, I appreciate you taking the time to to come here and and discuss it with everyone and and, and keep everyone aware So obviously feel free to raise hands, drop more questions in the chat or whatever. But uh, in, in the meantime, as I'm scrolling through here, uh, there was a lot of talk. Um, obviously appreciate your position on uh, the legal assessment and, and don't want to um, put anyone on the spot or, or you know try to make them feel uncomfortable here. Uh, but I, I do think this is a good question just in terms of organizational structure. like. How is the DAO supposed to receive a, a legal assessment um, on on these issues when we we no longer have the the core units and the personnel uh, that that were previously performing those? Like, what's an acceptable standard? And um, yeah, how did how did we end up with uh, the the current group supporting this legal assessment? Um, seems like a, a a fair thing to explore. And maybe this one goes to the delegates. We can get a few more votes in there. Like, you know, how how would you respond to to essentially uh, someone from a cluster? So someone who hasn't been voted in by governance posting the the legal assessment for maker. Like, what are the things that come to your mind? Is there a, a better way we can be trying to present this information to to you? Yeah, appreciate it. Go for it. Good night. Sure. I mean, I think the problem isn't necessarily that it was a meta DAO, it's that it's a meta DAO that's kind of having rangers at the core who just have different incentives than the DAO. So um, whoever is doing these legal assessments should be kind of independent, shouldn't have any skin in the game on whether a proposal passes or fails. Yeah, go for it, uh, Raphael from Flipside. Um, yeah, Raphael from Flipside Governance here. Um, so I think basically the, the, we we had this touched upon this discussion the last GNR that that we kind of need this project based funding mechanism or uh, other vehicle to kind of um, tie tie us over over this uh, transition period that can be a little messy. Just personally for the for the Viridium cluster, I think. I'm, I'm just still not not really following through what what the concrete ask here is, and I think if we say, for instance, budget to do legal assessment for MIP eighty one implementation and this and that, I think that's pretty clear, and maybe there is a way there for teams to really um, start working with the DAO to have like very specific asks that are not open ended, because I think the worry here is that you start funding teams. That again spiral out of control and and just keep asking for more, keep asking for more, keep asking for more. When you have this kind of open ended uh, S, and I think where we want to go to is very specific uh, funding with a very tight scope, in ideally a competitive scenario, right? So right, there's an ask by the DAO, and then you have multiple teams speeding. But in the meantime, even my team could come forward and say like. Hey, there's a real pain point here. We we need a legal opinion on MIP 81 implementation. We actually have a lawyer. This is her price. Um, we're asking for that much money. And I think this makes it very tangible. There's a clear start and a clear end to this engagement. And um, I think that that would make it a lot easier to 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 approve funding, at least from, from my point of view. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I would reiterate from, from my perspective, I, I came in and, and look, perhaps naively into um, and maybe an assumption that a design has been laid out. Um, the community wants people to step up and now implement that. I, I guess my learning 
from trying to implement that is actually there's still a lot to be discussed and defined at a more granular level. And you know, my, the, the reason I'm sort of, I've even reached out to the delegates is, is actually I want to contribute to make, I guess, to address all the issues that, that, are, that are coming up. I, I'm certainly not involved. I sort of feel this is way above my, my pay grade, the whole design of, of how this has been, been set up, but, but I am trying to capture out of this experience the feedback and channel that into the right group. So, so actually, you know, we can find consensus and just move on to get the right talent onboarded and do great things in the market. Like, you know, my, my ambition and what motivates me is honestly, it's it's not this stuff. It's seeing great projects happen and just making that big impact in the market. So if this is how to help help it, so be it. But you know, um, I, I I just yeah, and I understand that little design questions. I I will take that back. Hey guys, it's uh, Frank from uh, Flip Flop Flop Delegate. Uh, we're, we're supporting this um, this poll here, Viridian Cluster. Uh, I think one thing that we must remind ourselves is that the landscape of um, digital assets, custody of digital assets in the real world is gonna change dramatically uh, in the next 24 months. I mean, you don't have to take my word for it, right? You can take a look at um, some of the centralized parties, uh, their leaderships, what they're saying. And, you know, if you watch a lot of this stuff in Davos, Switzerland right now, <clears throat> a lot of their talk is based around, you know, unfortunately, we might not agree with it here uh, in DeFi, but uh, regulation, right, that's coming, pending regulation. So if MKR token owners are supporting the ability for this DAO to have RWAs as collateral types, we're going to need to fund some of this some of this work, right? And I don't have the right answers how it should be done, but the one thing I do know about the end game is that each sub DAO is going to uh, be self-sufficient and be able to go out and reach out because I don't think that just onboarding or just outsourcing it to you know one legal expert or two legal experts is enough. Um, you might have to have a, an entire team to kind of give the DAO an opinion or the sub DAO an opinion. Um, so this, this is just a huge ecosystem that's going to be developed here little by little, and it's going to take a lot more than 500,000 uh, die to, to fund a lot of this stuff. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're hopeful, we're positive, and, and uh, yeah, I, I support this uh, Viridian cluster and what it's attempting to do. Uh, I have a lot of confidence that the folks who are behind this cluster have nothing but good intentions for the DAO, uh, maker DAO community. If I didn't think that, trust me, uh, flip flop flap delegate would have uh, opposed this, but uh, I urge every delegate before the vote ends to go out there and um, demand a public call. You know, if you, if you want to, you know, ask Rajiv to meet you on a Saturday morning, record it, uh, what, what have you, post it on the, on the Discord and say, Hey, Rajiv, I'm joining the call, whatever, make it public and ask them what you want if Rajiv's okay with that. But I think that you need to put in the work to really dissect uh, what is being asked here and, and what the, uh, the reason is for that 500,000 die ask. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just a commentary, no, no questions. at the chat here. I know we had some Gemini representatives in the delegates call. Um, or is there anything from that call or maybe not from that call that 
we wanted to discuss about Gemini or GUSD? Got about 20 minutes before we typically conclude the call here. All right, well, uh, really appreciate all the engagement today. It's nice hearing from so many voices on this call. Um, as we said, this ended up being a, a bit more lively of a update and, and discussion. Um, so we will go ahead and postpone DLOs till next week. The really good news is that gives everyone here uh, a chance to do some homework, to read the DAO level objectives MIP uh, and the other MIPs that Retro put forward uh, and, and take a look because uh, they do try to address a lot of uh, kind of the pain points that we brought up today in terms of uh, interim funding, uh, having something addressable and, uh, you know, um, what's the word, more uh, uh, more concrete, right, for, for delegates to consider. Um, so we'll be really curious to hear people's thoughts on that and, and particularly on what aspects people still think uh, are, are falling short for us, right, because we're still designing this in motion, uh, particularly the transition to end game. Uh, so if you feel like there are any holes, if uh, you're a person who might get left behind by by what the DLO is, is pitching, um, next week will be a really great place to engage and, and talk about that a little bit. So huge thanks to everyone uh, who came here today. Uh, we appreciate obviously all your time. You can get a little cheap preview for next week. But uh, yeah, we'll be back here same time, same place. Let's keep the conversation going in the forum and on Discord. And a uh, huge thanks to the Viridian Gluster for coming out and uh, spending so much of their time with us here today. I'll say uh, thanks, folks, and we'll see you next week.